It's Saturday night, and more than 300 anxious wrestling fans have forked over 12 bucks apiece to enter the Combat Zone, a former furniture warehouse now home to a monthly menu of mayhem. The founder of this festival of fisticuffs is 29-year-old John Zandig, who gave up construction work to create what we call Beyond Extreme Entertainment. We take it to the next level. We give them a little bit of everything. The half dozen matches per show include all the standard wrestling fare, outlandish costumes, pulled punches, and more clotheslines than Granny's backyard. But as the evening grows later, the show grows wilder. Meet the Blade, Rick Merck, a 22-year-old psychology major at Temple University whose shtick is a sort of karate kid meets flying Melendez. Rick's signature move involves dive bombing his hapless opponent. So it started out just like a gimmick, just something to be funny. And then it turned out a lot of people liked it, and it turned out to be a pretty devastating move, so I decided to keep it. Wrestling action is choreographed, make no mistake, but it is still risky, dangerous business. The stuff that normally would hurt it doesn't phase you. So later on or that morning, you're waking up. You don't want to get up. John Zandig is not only the founder of the Combat Zone, he is also one of its biggest wrestling attractions and the show's moral arbiter. At Zandig's shows, sex is out. You'll see only a handful of chesty women in tight costumes. But violence, well, that's another matter. People need violence. I mean, that's the, they, they want to see it. They're, they're, there's, there's an audience for it. So we, we give that to them. Come on, Zandig, let these That bloodlust is evident in fans like 64-year-old Rick Mershon, a Bucks County retiree who's been following wrestling for more than half a century. That's the society today. People want the action, but blood, but hitting, fighting, cussing, the SP, you know? It all sounds mucho macho, but you don't have to look hard to find women in this crowd, like new wrestling convert Connie Koki. It's a little gory, but it's interesting. And you can hardly miss the dozens of young teens at these matches, boys who wouldn't be allowed into an R-rated movie to watch fake violence on the screen can see real blood and guts up close and personal. Doesn't this kind of entertainment send adolescents a dangerous message? Nah, says 14-year-old Brian Stanford. And if you have a good head on your shoulders, you should know what, what's right and wrong. Despite watching this, you're not going to go out and smash a chair over somebody's head. No. Oh, maybe my little brother, but that's about it. The hit of the evening may well be the barbed wire strap match, which is every bit as gruesome as the name suggests. Before it's over, the combatants will be covered with blood. This is not the biggest of big-time wrestling. The fighters are paid little, and media coverage comes mostly from a home handicam mounted in the corner. It's a hard way to make a living, leaving work each night on a stretcher, but John Zandig says he wouldn't have it any other way. Well, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and I'm doing it. It's something I love. People are always going to need entertainment, and we're going to be here to give it to them. Just the way 